the winner of uh, the Ghana Most Beautiful 2021, um, Dr. Setor, and South African Youth Leader and the President of the Soweto Parliament, Lotata Lux, have come all the way from their respective countries to Ethiopia, and they are my guests today in this edition of our this dialogue. With it, I'm Shifa Raulako, and we'll be spending some time with them. Do stay with us. My guests today, thank you so much for both of you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you for having me. All right. Uh, first of all, let me start with Dr. Setor. Yeah. Now, um, when you won the Ghana Beauty Pageant uh, 2021, you were decorated with uh, Ethiopian costumes. Yes. And you, you were also amazing, you know, describing facts about Ethiopia. Yes. Um, so now tell me, how, how come you are so familiar with Ethiopia? Let's start with this. So first and foremost, in the pageant, we had to do a one Africa presentation in Ghana's Most Beautiful. So it means that many of the girls or all of the girls had to pick a particular country to represent. I thought that it was very important to pick a country that represents Africa because mm -hmm. I was going to be talking about African unity. And like I always say, um, the seat of the African Union sits here. And from the word African Union, African unity, yeah. or formerly known as the Organization of African Unity, it means that Ethiopia represents, for it to have the headquarters of the African Union, Ethiopia represents the unity of Africa. So if we're going to have a competition and we're going to be talking about the unity of Africa, the, the, the first place to think about is a country like that, that represents the unity of Africa. All right. Uh, uh, what in, in your view, what is Ethiopia to you and you know, to the rest of the continent? Ethiopia is where our African heritage lies as we speak today because it's the only country in the continent that hasn't been colonized. And that's why we as Africans need to understand that an Ethiopian fight is an African fight because if Ethiopia gets colonized, then we've completely lost our heritage. If you go to South Africa where I come from and ask a young person, what is your history? They will speak a lot about white history not their true history mm -hmm. because when the colonizer comes into your country the first thing they do is they wipe off your history so that they can teach you new history that is not true to your ethnicity so yeah. that when even in your reasoning you think that they play a big part of who you are when they actually do not mm -hmm. so ethiopia is the heartbeat of this continent simply because of the fact that it was not colonized and if you want your true way of life that has to do with africa you must come and seek it here in yeah. ethiopia all right, uh, uh, beautifully put. You know, uh, both of you are now visiting this uh, uncolonized country, yeah. Ethiopia, um, uh, which we are happy about, obviously. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's first start with the positive side of your visit to mm -hmm. the different parts of the country. What have you seen and, and what, what have you, you, know, uh, you found most uh, you know, amazing, if you like? Um, so like I told you, first and foremost, I've been here for a few days. So I've had the opportunity to visit Lalibela. Yeah. Um, I participated in Ghana, the event at the church. Very beautiful, very, very beautiful activity. You would think that in a time like this when the whole world is um, hearing about crisis in Ethiopia, then you, you'd think that you see a lot of chaos on the street. But mm -hmm. contrary to that, I didn't see any chaos. It has been very, very, very peaceful since I got here five days. Security has been top notch. and. Everything has just been beautiful. The streets have been calm, beautiful buildings, beautiful people, the love of the culture, beautiful food. So for me, my visit, I'm expectant though, because I still have a couple of days to stay here till I go back to my country. I'm very, very, very expectant. But so far, it's been amazing. It's been wonderful. It's been beautiful. And it's a country that I think every tourist must come and visit and mm. see for themselves. But uh, Lotata, this happens, you know, against the background of many uh, erroneous information going on against the country, you know, yeah. to leave the country immediately, yeah. especially by some Western powers. Yeah. So what, what kind of message does your visit particularly convey mm. in this regard? Look, um, the message is clear that international propaganda is real. Mm. There's, there's a serious mission to, 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 to make it seem as if Ethiopia is not as peaceful as it is. Mm -hmm. We are on the ground. We are not here to read Facebook posts and Twitter messages. We are here to live the experience. We've yeah. lived the experience across many regions. And we've spoken to people. 
We've spoken to people, we've taken pictures, recordings, we've interviewed ordinary people on the ground. So the message that we're taking to the world is not fabricated messaging. Yeah. It's authentic, real messaging that comes from the people of Ethiopia, mm -hmm. not from the government. And the message is clear. In conclusion, the people of Ethiopia have made it clear that they are in support of Dr. Abiy's government and they are in uh, they have united with Dr. Abiy's government to make sure that they fight the rebel forces that are sponsored by external forces, be it from Western forces, in their communities. We've had some regions that were taken over by the TPLF forces where the community fought against the TPLF forces, yeah. where the government fought against TPLF forces. Now most of these regions are now back in the hands of the community and in the hands of government. And when we visit those communities, the only sign of destruction is a physical sign of schools perhaps being vandalized, police stations being vandalized, but when you speak to the people, there's this, th this new spirit of, being of, of, of a fresh breath of air, of people being happy that they were able to fight the rebel forces and move them out. So in, in, in a nutshell, the message yeah. that, goes out, that goes out to the rest of the world is that Ethiopia is a place that you should come in to and make sure you visit as an international or domestic tourist. Make sure you come to Ethiopia because the, the, the anarchy that the rest of the world is speaking about on, on the international media platforms is not true. That we can, we can confirm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, um, Lotata, you know, part of your visit is to the, the Lalibala Rock oh yes. churches. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that some of your visits must have, you know, disclosed. Yeah. Uh, the destructions and looting, yeah. the vandalism of yeah. uh, properties and also of rapes. Yeah. What have you observed uh, in this regard? Let's, let's start with, with um, the heritage site, th um, the church that you just mentioned. That is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen mm -hmm. because it tells me, it actually reminds us as Africans that our true intelligence is far greater than what history suggests, at least colonization history or the colonizer's history. Because when you go to that church, it was built in the 12th century and the architecture that was, that was achieved there yeah. is nothing that modern day technology can achieve. That shows you the brilliance of Africans pre-colonization, right? So going back to the, to, to the sad side of, of what you asked me, yeah. the, the, the woman being raped, I interviewed a woman that was raped by the TPLF forces in front of a 10-year-old daughter and an 8-year-old daughter. They were watching. The girls told me what happened. It was sad to even listen to. So this is something that the whole world needs to wake up to because when you find these external forces financing so much destruction in our continent in our countries you must understand that it comes with ripple effects of individuals being damaged to the point to a point where we can't even fix them hospitals are damaged this woman was raped by three tplf um, for, uh, force members without a condom i have to be honest and say it as it is without a condom she doesn't know if she's sick or not. She doesn't know if she's, in, if she's contracted any, any disease or virus or not. The hospitals are not there. Why? Because the same TPLF forces damaged the hospitals. Yeah. So something that could have taken 10 days to sort out if we had the hospitals and the clinics will now probably take a year. And what happens to her in a year? She'll probably die if there's no, if there's no serious measures put in place, medical or health measures put in place. Mm -hmm. And the ripple effect is these girls are traumatized, eight years, 10 years. And then in a couple of years, they lose their mother to a virus contracted in, in that very moment. Th so now they are traumatized and motherless. What do we do? Then the whole continent spirals into depression, into oppression. This is exactly what these external forces want. They, they, th the environment that we see now is what they have designed. So we should be actually wiser and open our eyes even more to stop this nonsense because it's nonsense. Yeah, the, uh, doctor, uh, let, me, let me hear your side so of the story. So I had the opportunity to be taken around the Lalibela airport. I saw a lot of vandalism that had gone on. So apparently the airport is being um, run analog mm. from what I was briefed on. And I saw a lot of write-ups on the walls of the airport. and. Clearly, even if you look at it from a medical perspective, from a psychological yeah. perspective, you could tell that these are write-ups that were done by children. And that is heartbreaking. Children mm -hmm. with, um, people with not very advanced um, um, intellect or having done a lot of education, children who are growing up 
for children's psychology to be tweaked at that age it is it is very wrong to mm -hmm. to push children into doing that kind of distraction for me it is it's heartbreaking it was heartbreaking for me yeah. to see then i was told the story about a woman who was raped like how i wouldn't watch any woman go through that and for little girls at that age eight years and ten years what do they become 20 years from then because i have had the opportunity with my he mental health project to interact with many people who have had many mental health problems. And if we don't sort set some of these issues out, this is, this is going to be the end, end result. Many people are going to have a lot of mental health issues and if not properly sorted out to a long extent, will affect the economy, not just of Ethiopia, there will be a ripple effect in the whole of Africa. That is why our African brothers need to come together to support our brothers in Ethiopia to stop this distraction that's going on is heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. When I saw the airport, I, I didn't know it was that bad, but when I saw the vandalism in the airport, I almost broke down in tears. I'm like, why should this happen? These trails of uh, destruction, uh, lootings, you know, vandalism, rapes, what kind of message do they convey to the whole continent of Africa, especially uh, you know, in, in bringing uh, the people of the continent together against such kinds of heinous crimes? Strong message is in line with what you just said. The men of Africa need to stop being soft. Yeah. You need to match up the forces that are, that are being sent to cause this, this stabilization in this continent. Number one, the men of Africa, you should stop running away from your issues in, the, in, in your countries. Mm -hmm. South Africa has many problems, but you'll never see South African men running away. And I don't think I'm saying that we are better by any means. But the message is that we should all go back to our countries and stop seeking refuge in Europe and stop seeking refuge in America because you are what is justifying their nonsense. When people count how many refugees from Ethiopia are lying around in America, that justifies their, their lies and, and international media propaganda. If people, if people, we're counting people in, in other countries from Ethiopia, yeah. we, we, we are then saying, we are then justifying that Ethiopia has a problem when there's no real problem here. The real problem is that the men are not standing up to fight for their countries. Instead, they, they run. And we're not going to have men that run. These women can't protect themselves. Exactly. These women must be protected by us, men. These women and children must be protected by us. Our, the graves of our ancestors must be protected by their people. Now, if you are running away from your country, who, who must protect the grave of your ancestor? You're going to come back after 15 years, 10 years, with new leadership, with rebels as leadership, with malls, shops being built on top of your granny's grave. Where do you think that will take you as an African? Mm -hmm. We know our spiritual connection to our ancestors. Now, if you're running away, who must take care of the land? Mm -hmm. Who must take care of the infrastructure? Let me tell you, it's actually a plan from these external forces to get the men to run away from their countries. Why? Because when the men have run away from their countries, there's no natural security for the country. Then they come and take the natural resources of that country for the next 20 years, and then they leave. And then the men come back, it's very late. They come back as, 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 as old men who, with fear in their hearts and in their minds. Yeah. So the message is clear. Mm -hmm. African men must go back and make sure that they have, they, they play their part in fighting for the future of their countries and the future of their women and children and make sure, because if we all do that in our countries in Africa, then the continent becomes a strong continent. Yeah, indeed. Uh, doctor, uh, would you like to add something? Yes, yeah? my, my yeah. message is simple. Love rules. There's no reason for war. There's no reason to fight. There's no reason for distraction. The world would be a better place if we all tolerated and then we, li we, we lived in peace with each other. There's no reason for anybody in the world to, to, to extend forces wherever they are from, whether in Tenal, it's Tenal, whatever, to, to do anything to anybody. We should learn to love. And it is very beautiful that Ethiopia is the only country in Africa that hasn't been colonized. So to Ethiopians, kudos, let's keep it like that. Yeah, indeed. thank you. Let's also talk about the hashtag no more movement. How should this uh, hashtag no more movement uh, be supported by other Afghan nations so that it will be more robust, more institutionalized, or uh, continent-wide, if you will? Yeah. You know, the beauty of the world we live in right now is that we are interconnected. The same people that are causing problems in Ethiopia 
they've got their offices existing in South Africa. So we can, all of us, if you really want to fight the good fight, we can have a march, as you've seen in Pretoria, we had the biggest march in the world of the No More Movement. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was any march bigger than ours in South Africa in, in the spirit of fighting for Ethiopia. So as Africans, we need to make sure that young people, young people in particular, because again, Ethiopia is blessed with having the youngest president in the world. Right. So we need to support the youngest president, sorry, in Africa. We need to support the youngest president in Africa, Dr. Abi. Mm -hmm. Because we're not going to see, in our time, forces moving Dr. Abi away so that we can replace him with a 70, 80-year-old. That, that 70 and 80-year-old president, a thing of the past. Africa needs to em emerge with young presidents, fresh mind, fresh thinking, fresh execution. Mm -hmm. You know why the external forces of the continent don't want young presidents? Because they cannot control our minds. They know that these young minds are not as uh, colonized as their forefathers were. So mm -hmm. these ones won't listen when yeah. you want to take the gold for free. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to achieve this and achieve the unity? We have to form the structures. You can't just talk about it on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter the whole time. You can't be Twitter warriors. You have to make sure that in your country, you are on the ground, you are forming structures, you are forming WhatsApp groups, you are forming continental WhatsApp groups. You must be able to say that when, when you see something on the news, we have our own media platforms Right now, a lot of young people have in, um, social media as, as infrastructure because they, they, they live on their social media. Right. Fight for your country because it's a resource that you have. Mm. But in South Africa, what we then do is that we come together with all Africans, all embassies, African embassies. We go to them. The door must be open. Open door policy. What's happening in your country? How can we help? Because if we don't help, your problems end up becoming ours. And then that's what they want to see. Well, that's what the enemy wants to see. So we need to make sure that the no more movement exists in every single country in this continent. Not only exists by virtue of logo, it must exist on the ground, it must exist in structure, it must have life, we must continue to talk. We must have a group of, a WhatsApp group with, with um, executives of no more WhatsApp, uh, no more uh, movement yeah. in every country where we talk every single day with people that can interpret. Mm -hmm. If you can't speak Amharic, some of us will interpret that these people, that the, the young people in Ethiopia are saying one, two, three, so that Ghana can understand, so that South Africa can understand. You can interpret in Spanish so that we actually have a hold on our continent. Because right now, no African has a stronghold on the African continent. The stronghold in terms of media, infrastructure, um, and every other infrastructure is owned by people outside the continent. Yeah. We, in our generation, it's our resp responsibility to ensure that we break the chain of mm. colonization and we start to own this continent because this continent is our continent we have no other place to go to this is our motherland indeed and yeah. also the issue is uh, continent wide so how popular is the hashtag no more movement in ghana in your country and other countries as well? okay so yeah. social media is a global language so a lot of people um see the hashtag no more uh, movement going on on social media in ghana for instance i haven't seen a match done like in south africa but I, um, there are lots of people who are in high spirits and supporting Ethiopia and standing firm behind Ethiopia as a country. Um, in spirit of that, having come here to um, see for myself firsthand what is happening on the ground, I believe that it will be in good spirits to go back, like he said, um, probably rally a few young people together because it's the young people that can hold the, um, the continent together and probably start an Ethiopian friendship to start with, so that's part of my plan mm -hmm. from here going, right. to start an ethio Ghana friendship. Then from there we can take it all ahead, maybe we could start a Ghana-South African friendship, and then we could see how we could um, merge the African continent together and fight against some of these little, little ills and protect each other as a continent. The hashtag no more, very popular on social media, and there are lots of Ghanaians who love Ethiopia and support Ethiopia with one big heart. All right, uh, Setor, let me ask you this question. You know, one of the issues that Ethiopia is facing, of course, uh, Africa is facing is foreign meddling, you know, uh, neo-colonialism, uh, imperialistic uh, moves, etc. cetera, you name it. So how can the continent of Africa put an end to such uh, meddling in your view? Um, I have had the opportunity to um, study in a country like Cuba, where a country that runs its own affairs. I believe if we begin to learn some of these 
little, little parts of some of these countries who run their own affairs, yeah. then we would begin to move forward as a continent. We should start learning to do a few things. Instead of doing a lot of imports of production, all of that, we should start doing production in our own countries. When we start making revenue on our own, eventually we become independent people. We should start, we should start breaking off from certain things slowly but surely. Or like he, he likes to say, it must stop now, no more now. <laughs> However, every country has their dynamics. So I, 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 I personally believe that we should learn stuff from countries like Cuba who run their own affairs. We have to learn to start running our own affairs irrespective of the consequences. When we begin to run our own affairs irrespective of the consequences, then we begin to network as Africans, country by country, West Africa networking with East Africa, um, East Africa networking with North Africa, North Africa not networking with South Africa, then we can come together and push the agenda of African unity as a whole. And then we can break away from neocolonialism eventually. Right. Your comments, please. The first step to make sure that we don't have any form of colonization, systematic or physical, moving forward mm. to free this continent. We need to make sure that we achieve a few things as basic fundamentals. What Gaddafi died for, he died for the truth. If you understand what real leaders in Africa really wanted, you'll understand why external forces killed them. Mm -hmm. We should be speaking one language in this continent. We should have a, a continent conference that says, what's this language you're going to speak? Make sure that every single school in Africa teaches grade one learners, seven-year-olds, this language, so that in 20 years' time, Africa speaks one language. That improves our trade, that improves our economies in the countries, mm -hmm. that improves our, our communication and personal relationships. Right now, we're using, right now, we're speaking English. Yeah. <laughs> People in England are sitting, ha having fun, and listening to us speak about our African problems. In their own language. In their own language. Yeah. It's not our problem because our, our forefathers were colonized, not us. But right now, we have an opportunity to use one language. We must do that now. Africans, can't, they want us to think for today. That's why they, they're sponsoring anarchy in this country. Because if, if there's gunshots everywhere, you think of how to survive today. You can't plan for 10 years' time. But we know that because we're not stupid. We understand that as young Africans. So in our unity process as Africans, one language. And then once we can achieve we can start the process of that one language. When the grade ones get to maybe they, they seven year olds, they get to uh, teenage years, 13, then we start introducing one currency. Why? Because that is a plan for the future. Those people that speak one language, in future they must use one currency. Then we'll see who is a real power nation. Africa is a real power nation only if you plan for the future. Indeed, but um, the problem is, uh, how can this even be realistic? Because you know there are lots of people part of the other side that are bent on meddling in the internal affairs of the continent of Africa. Unity in Africa is possible. Is it practical? Is it achievable? The answer is yes. Is it achievable right now? If you break it down in planning, you need to think like a colonizer. They didn't wake up and say, let's colonize Africa and, and, and just colonize it. They sent Jan van Riebeck in South Africa on, on a boat. On a, on a big ship. They sent other people here in Ethiopia. But luckily we had serious leaders here in Ethiopia that managed to fight against colonization. They sent everyone first to study the continent. They went back to their, to their, to their masters and told them that this is what's going on and they had a plan to come back and colonize us. If you want to, to reclaim the, our land, the heritage, our, 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 our ancient secrets of Africa, we need to be honest with ourselves and say that it's not in our hands. It's been taken. Because a lot of people are living a delusional life. They think that they're still in control of something. We are not in control of anything in this continent. We are not. We're not in control of the economics. We're not in control of the politics. We're not in control of the social affairs. Yeah. Social affairs are controlled by Facebook. Who owns Facebook? Right now, Facebook, if you start having a serious uh, uh, a social media campaign, it might be minimized. Who's minimizing that thing? Mm -hmm. Because you're speaking against, I mean, even if, if we own Facebook in Africa, we'd make sure that the agenda is for Africa. Yeah. So we need to be honest with ourselves and be practical that we own nothing. And how do we get back what was ours? We need yeah. to think like the colonizer. We are the new colonizers. Of, and, and the difference is that we're not colonizing their land. We are mm. colonizing our own land in the spirit of reclaiming it. Yeah. 
Seth, or do, do you agree with him? Yeah, to a huge extent, I do. Yeah. To a huge extent, I do. But first and foremost, how, uh, like you said, is it practical? Is Pan-Africanism practical? We have to understand ourselves as Africans. We have to understand our heritage as Africans. We have to understand that we are Africans. And that is where everything starts from. If you understand that you are African, then you don't, your names, you, you value your names, like a name like Seto, which is a, a typical um, African Voltairean name. You name your children Seto, a typical African name. You're proud of your heritage. So anywhere you stand in the world, everybody knows this is a Ghanaian woman from Ghana, from Volta region, called Seto. With a Ghanaian name. With a Ghanaian uh, name. Instead of um, naming our children and stuff like Jane and stuff, because we are accepting the, the culture of the foreign world that has been taught to us. Yeah. Okay. So we, we first and foremost, we need to understand who we are. It, it starts from the basics. We need to understand who we are. We need to accept that we are Africans and we will not change from being Africans. From there, we can actually start by embracing each other as Africans as a whole. All right. Thank you. Okay. Setoro, let me, let me come to you again. Now, mm -hmm. Uh, how are you going to help Ethiopia, you know, uh, convey its call for fairness, uh, objectivity? So, like I said, I've come here first and I've seen what is on the ground. I've seen the, th uh, the vandalism that's going on in the um, airports. Um, for me, my message for Africa generally and Ethiopia is about unity. Yeah. So I'm going to try and use my social media platforms to preach unity, to preach um, uh, peace in places like Ethiopia, which is already peaceful, like to, to actually propagate the peace that I've come to meet yeah. to the world and um, try to, um, like I said, um, establish African friendships, like yeah. to start with, an Ethiopian friendship that will rally more Ghanaians behind Ethiopia and help us solve African problems. So those are some of my plans. As time goes on, I'll expand them. As you know, Twitter is also trying to silence Ethiopians' voice, uh, in addition to other uh, social media platforms. Uh, in, uh, in this regard, you know, I know that you are helping Ethiopians in South Africa as well. Yes. So as a friend of Ethiopia, as an African, how are you go going to help Ethiopia convey its call for fairness? So, there's one thing that needs to happen. We need to stop talking. We talk too much. <laughs> we talk too much as Africans. I as I'll, I'll use my Twitter and say, oh, peace and hashtag no more. Those things don't work. Time has proven it. Mm. We've been oppressed for 500 years. Why? Because we've been talking. <laughs> In the 500 years of oppression, yeah. do you remember a time where Africa stood up and, and took its armies to, to where the forces are coming from and we actually had a good fight and won it? No, because we are too loving and we are too caring and we want to pray for those that are killing us. <laughs> Listen here, that time is over. <laughs> if people have plans to cause serious anarchy in our continent. We, I said it earlier, we must think like colonizers. Even if it means that we must die for our continent, let it be. We must stop talking on these social media things. We, I will personally make sure that when I get to South Africa, I will engage government, I will engage um, the, the people on the ground to say that how are we going back so that we are on the ground and fighting with our people in Ethiopia. We're not going to be in South Africa and sit in couches and watch big TV screens and post on Twitter and say, oh, our people, that thing doesn't work. Yeah. That's what they want us to, that's how they want us to behave. We're not going to behave like that. We are going to be on the ground fighting with our people, uh, uh, with our Ethiopian people. We're going to be on the ground fighting with our African brothers and sisters. Even, even after this war, because this war is going to end. It's not going to last another 50 years. If Dr. Abi and the government are not going to solve this war, then the young people of South Africa and the young people of Africa will make sure that we come together and put a full stop to this thing. And we know how. We're not going to say it here. We know how. We put a full stop to this. And we don't care to be, to be seen as targets from external forces. If you're going to kill us for the truth, you kill us. But you must be ready when you come here and send people to kill us. We are not Gaddafi. We are not, we are not um, our old leaders. We are ready for you because history has taught us how you behave and who you really are. Mm. You never change. You can't come here and smile with us and think that your smile is, is convincing enough for me to, to trust you. We we'll live amongst you, but we'll never trust you. We've, we've seen what you've done to our continent for the last 500 years. Yeah. You are dealing with a different type of African mm -hmm. when you're dealing with the young people of today. We're going to sort it out. We will put a full stop to this. We are giving Dr. Abi and the government a few months. We'll see us. We'll come in troops. We'll come in big numbers here. 
when, whether we come in as governments, if the governments are not scared, they should be here. If the governments, if the, the other uh, 50 plus nations of this continent are not scared, they should be here fighting for the people of Ethiopia. But they are there, wherever they are, on, on, on fancy suits, in their couches, sipping warm water <laughs> and wine when our people in Ethiopia don't have water because the TPLF forces are, are, are causing so much destruction. Yeah. For me, that makes me very angry. You should be here, not on Twitter, here. So mm -hmm. that's why I don't even care for people that talk on Twitter, small boys. T Twitter is, is a nursery school, kindergarten, what do you call it, crutch, pre, pre, it's primary school. Mm -hmm. It's for young students, that thing. Real men, real women are on the ground fighting for the future of their countries. Yeah. Not in other countries relaxing and having fun. You must come here. So we will come here and make sure that we fight. Even if it means we must die for our people, we'll die for our people. That's it. So um, it's time to be pragmatic, 100%. realistic, you 100%. Know, rather than talking. You are a pan-Africanist uh, in mm. favor of the hashtag uh, no more mm. movement. But there are certain groups that are you know, accusing you that yeah, uh, yeah, xenophobic, xenophobic etc. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what, what kind of message do you convey to them? Yeah. They, those people are agents of TPLF forces. Those people are agents of the external forces coming from outside this continent to destabilize this continent. Those people are people who are happy to speak negative about Ethiopia. You look at all those accounts on those social medias that I hate so much. Watch those accounts when they say, ah, Lux is xenophobic. Ah, but eh, they never say anything positive about Ethiopia. It's one thing for you to, 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 to find an account that speaks positive, 100 tweets that are positive, that are fighting for the people of Ethiopia. And then that same person then says, Lux is xenophobic. You must take that person serious. But if, there's, there's, if you look at the history of their tweets, there's nothing positive about Dr. Abi. There's nothing positive about Ethiopia. And then they say Lux is xenophobic because he's here speaking for the people of Ethiopia. We mustn't even speak about these people on such platforms. We're giving them airtime. They don't deserve <laughs> this airtime, these people. We must speak about progressive people mm -hmm. who actually fight for the, for the continent. People who are prepared to die for the continent. You can go to South Africa. Let me tell you why they say I'm xenophobic. Because we do not tolerate anything that undermines our laws. Once the constitution of your country is undermined and you allow the smallest thing to undermine it, then it followed by the big thing and the bigger thing. And the b before you know it, your country is chaotic. So when you find our African brothers, not even African brothers, even some, some people, uh, il uh, illegal foreigners, illegal, not legal foreigners, illegal foreigners coming to your country to, 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 to hijack buildings, we are, we are subjected to serious problems that are brought to us by illegal foreigners not legal mm -hmm. go to the embassies and ask how much we are helping them go to legal foreigners and see how much joy they find from us working with them i've received i've taken more than 20 bullets flying at me being oh. shot at helping legal foreigners legal foreigners in south africa so when you stand up and go to 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 uh, and fight crime and when you get to the crime it's crime committed by illegal foreigners and then they take videos and say relax is xenophobic Listen, I'm not here for social media. I'm here for the right thing. I know who I am. Ask the embassies, they know who I am. Ask the legal foreigners, they know who I am. But most importantly, ask the South Africans, they'll tell you who I am. Even when I leave here, I can tell you already, when I leave here, I'm going back to South Africa. There's a serious issue with, 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 uh, with uh, electricity because our cables are being stolen and when, they, when we are tracing where they are going, they're going outside the country. We have serious issue with uh, uh, South Africans not having enough power. When you trace what's going on, there's a large consumption by undocumented people. It's not a problem to, to, to come to South Africa. Uh, just respect the laws of South Africa and make sure that when you are there, you comply with the laws of South Africa. Mm. The laws accommodate asylum seekers. There's nothing wrong with that. But just go knock at the doors of your embassy and say, I'm an asylum seeker. They write, they give you the necessary document so that you can be legal mm -hmm. within the frameworks of the constitution. But there's many illegal people coming from the continent and outside the continent who know that when they are in South Africa, they can commit crimes, murder our women, rape women, do the, 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 the violent crime, because they know that when you find them and you run their fingerprint, they're not on the system. They can run away tomorrow from jail and still commit crimes because they are ghosts in our town. Uh, we are not going to keep quiet simply because we are scared of being called xenophobic. Call me xenophobic if that needs to be. Exactly. No problem. Exactly. Thank you. Well, Lux from South Africa yeah. and Setor from Ghana. Yeah. Thank you both. Uh,
uh, so much for your time and your Thank wonderful you. ideas. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for you. having Appreciate me. Appreciate you so much. Well, dear viewers, with that, we come to the end of today's program and many thanks for watching us. Till I see you next time with another program. It's goodbye from me, Farah Bye-bye.